Wait, wait, don't start. Don't wait, don't start yet. Don't start, don't start, don't start. Don't. Sorry I'm late. I'm working on screenplays and brokering deals across the industry. Okay, uh, UFC 160, uh, it's Bridgewater's finest. This heavyweight fights, heavyweight title fight. Let's go. So now that I got to do my stupid little intro, let's actually get to the fight picks. We're going to start on the Facebook prelim card, featherweight division. We have Jeremy Stevens taking on Estevan Payan. Jeremy Stevens, 20 and 9 on his pro career, a losing record of 7 and 8 in the UFC. Currently riding a three loss streak to Eve Edwards, Donald Cerrone, and Anthony Pettis. Now, 14 of his 20 wins have come by way of knockout, but he's got relatively unimpressive UFC wins, with his best win arguably being Sam Stout. But he's got heavy hands, and he's got a BJJ black belt. We take a look at Estevan Payan, 14-3-1 on his pro career, making his UFC debut. He was 1-1 one one in Bellator and won both of his strike force fights. He's also unbeaten in his last eight fights. He's got that one no contest in there. He fights with the Arizona Combat Sports Team. Eight of his 14 pro wins have been finished. He's got five knockouts and three submissions, so he's got talent wherever the fight goes. However, he has been knocked out in two of his three losses, and I think that's important against a heavy-handed guy like Jeremy Stevens. He is 6-1 and one when the fight goes the distance. I would describe him as a boxer, but he does have some grappling skills, and he does have some wrestling skills. I have to go with Jeremy Stevens in this fight because if Jeremy Stevens can't beat Estevan Payan, who's really only going to bring probably a single dimension to this fight, I got to go with Jeremy Stevens. I'll take Jeremy Stevens to beat Estevan Payan by second round knockout or TKO. Bantamweight division, we have Brian Bowles taking on George Roop. Now, Brian Bowles is 10-2 and two on his professional career. A 2-1 and one record in the UFC was submitted in his last fight by Uriah Faber. Now, both of the losses on his career come to former champions at this weight class or a similar weight class. You're talking Uriah Faber and Dominic Cruz. Six of his ten pro wins have come by way of submission, but he's been finished in both of those losses. Bowles is a very, very active ground fighter. He'll go for sweeps. He'll go to pass the guard. He'll throw a lot of submissions in there. So Bowles is very active when the fight hits the ground. George Roop, I put it out there on Front Street, not a huge George Roop fan. 13-9 and nine on his pro career, a losing record of 3-5 and five in the UFC. However, he did decision Ruben Duran in his last fight. Now, seven of his 13 pro wins have been finished. He's got three knockouts and four submissions, but he has been finished in six of his nine losses, four of those six coming by way of submission. To me, he's a stand-up fighter, but he's a stand-up fighter that only hits about a third of his incoming strikes. So, it's all good to be a stand-up fighter, but you also have to hit. Uh, he's very tall, which does help his reach, but really hurts his takedown defense, and I think that's what the, this fight's going to come down to. Whether George Roop can stuff Brian Bowles' takedowns, I don't think he can. I'm going to take Brian Bowles to beat George Roop by unanimous judge's decision. Welterweight division, we have a guy I'm a big fan of, Stephen Thompson, taking on Nashawn Burrell. Stephen Thompson, 6-1 and one on his pro career, 1-1 one and one record in the UFC, decisioned in his last fight by a high-level opponent in Matt Brown. He was an unbeaten 20-0 kickboxer. Three of his six pro wins in MMA have come by way of knockout. He's still relatively one-dimensional. He's basically just a stand-up fighter. But he's extremely dangerous standing up, and he also has a 62% takedown defense. So he's not the easiest guy in the world to get on the ground. Nashawn Burrell, 9-2 and two in his pro career, won his only UFC fight, decisioning Yuri Villafor. He's a big welterweight. He's missed weight twice at this weight class, so he is a big welterweight. Could probably stand to move up to middle. Six of his nine pro wins have been knockouts. He has no registered takedowns in his last five fights, which again, with a guy like Stephen Thompson... The place you're really going to get him is on the ground. He does have strong stand-up, and he does have decent ground and pound if the fight goes there. I don't think the fight's going to go there. As I said, zero registered takedowns in his last five fights. I think this thing stays standing, and that's Stephen Thompson's domain. So I'm going to take Stephen Thompson to beat Nashawn Burrell by way of second round knockout or TKO. We move off the Facebook prelims and onto the rest of the prelim card. In the lightweight division, we have Khabib Nurmagomedov, the Russian Eagle, taking on Abel Triillo. Nurmagomedov, undefeated 19-0 in mixed martial arts, 3-0 in the UFC. He knocked out Tiago Tavares in his last fight as an underdog in that fight. 
14 of his 19 pro wins have been finishes, 7 knockouts, 7 submissions. Nurmagomedov can get it done wherever the fight goes. He has won by everything in the UFC. He's got a knockout win, he's got a submission win, and he's got a decision win. So he really can do it all. Has vicious ground and pound, and he's got great takedowns, and he has also never been taken down in the UFC. So to me, Habib Nurmagomedov is a very dangerous and complete lightweight fighter. Abel Triillo, 10 and 4 on his pro career, winning his only UFC fight. He's currently riding a five-fight win streak, including his TKO win over Marcus Levasseur in the UFC. Six of his ten pro wins have been finishes. He's got three knockouts and three submissions, but he has been finished in three of his four losses, including two submissions. He was really impressive in his UFC debut. Had about 75-76% striking. A lot of that was clinch striking and ground and pound. He did secure his only takedown, and he stuffed uh, either four, I think four out of five takedown attempts against him. So he was really, really impressive in that UFC debut. I'm just really high on Nurmagomedov. I have to take Habib to win this fight because I got uh, Habib's one of the guys I have to see lose before I can go against him. So I'm going to take Habib Nurmagomedov to beat Abel Triillo by second round submission. Continuing on the UFC 160 preliminary card, in the welterweight division, we have two Ultimate Fighter winners going head-to-head, -head, Colton Smith and Robert Whitaker. Now, Colton Smith, 3-1 on his pro career, he is 1-0 in the UFC, decisioned Mike Ricci to win uh, Season 16 of the Ultimate Fighter. He was knocked out in his only career loss. He has a very dominant, smothering almost wrestling style. He's not overly evasive, but he's got really good boxing and he's got really good ground and pound. Robert Whitaker, 10-2 and in his pro career, so definite experience edge there. 1-0 in the UFC, decisioning Brad Scott in his last fight to win the Smashes season of The Ultimate Fighter. He's a veteran of CFC in Australia, which is a good fight promotion out of Australia. He's a very unorthodox striker. He's got good arm bars, he's got good chokes. Nine of his ten pro wins have been finishes. Where I think this comes down to is I think Colton Smith's style translates better into the octagon. I really wanted to take Robert Whitaker in this fight because I think overall he's a better fighter, but Colton Smith's style, he was very, very impressive in that uh, fight to win Tough 16. I think I have to take Colton Smith. I want to take Whitaker, but I'm going to take Smith as my official prediction. I've got Colton Smith to beat Robert Whitaker by way of unanimous judges' decision. Featherweight division, we have Dennis the Menace Bermudez taking on Max Blessed Holloway. This is going to be a very good fight, if you're wondering. Dennis Bermudez, 10-3 and three on his pro career, 3-1 and one in the UFC, currently riding a three-fight win streak over Matt Grice, Tommy Hayden, and Pablo Garza. He is 5-0 and oh when the fight goes the distance. Of course, NCAA Div 1 wrestler, so that only makes sense. All three of his career losses have come by way of submission interesting. He has an 89% takedown defense, he's very active on the ground, and has very good ground and pound, especially at this weight class. Max Holloway, 7-1 and one on his pro career, a very good record of 3-1 and one in the UFC, the same record that Bermudez has. He is also riding a three-fight win streak over Leonard Garcia, Justin Lawrence, and Pat Schilling. He is also 5-0 and oh in decisions. His only loss comes by submission. These are two very, very similar fighters in their results, at the very least. Very elusive. He avoids about 73% of incoming strikes against him and has a better than 85% takedown defense. Holloway's going to want to keep this fight standing, and I actually think he's going to be able to. This might be a bit of an upset. I'm going to take Max Holloway in this fight. I've got Max Holloway to beat Dennis Bermudez to catch him early by knockout or technical knockout inside the very first round. And the last fight on the preliminary card, welterweight division, we have Mike Pyle taking on Rick the Horror Story. Mike Pyle, 24-8-1 on his pro career, a good record of 7-3 in the UFC. Currently riding a three-knockout or TKO win streak over James Head, Josh Neer, and Ricardo Funch. However, 16 of his 24 professional wins have come by way of submission, so two out of every three coming by a sub. However, he does have no submission wins since 2010. He's been finished in seven of his eight pro losses, and the thing about Mike Pyle is striking from everywhere. He'll go stand-up striking, he'll go clinch striking, he'll go ground striking. So wherever the fight is, Mike Pyle is throwing punches. Rick the Horror Story, 15 and 6 on his pro career, a lot of UFC experience with an 8 and 4 record. He TKO'd Quinn Mulhern in his last fight. 
He's just 8 and 5, however, when the fight goes the distance. So if the fight goes all three rounds, kind of been a little hit and miss for Rick Story. He's a hard striker with hands and elbows from all positions. He'll throw an elbow from anywhere, and his elbows are very, very good. He's very active on the ground. He's got average takedown ability. This is kind of a coin flip for me. I like both guys. They're both very good fighters. They're both experienced fighters. Rick Story. I'll go with Rick Story to beat Mike Pyle by way of second round knockout or TKO. So now we're going to move on to the UFC 160 main card. We've got five main card fights, including two at the heavyweight division. But first we're going to start with back-to-back -back lightweight fights. First in the lightweight division, we have Donald the Cowboy Cerrone taking on a strike force import, KJ Noons. Donald Cerrone is 20 and 5 in his pro career, a very good record of 6 and 2 in the UFC. However, he was TKO'd in his last fight by Showtime Pettis. He is a 28 0 and 1 pro kickboxer. However, 14 of his 20 MMA wins have come by way of submission. So, what this tells me is Donald Cerrone is a very complete fighter. He's got skills everywhere. Cerrone's only 4-3 and three when the fight goes the distance. He's got very strong striking, and he's a very active ground grappler. So when it gets on the ground, he likes sweeps. He likes to pass the guard. He likes to throw up submissions. In his actual numbers, he's only about a 47% striker and only about 47% on his takedowns. So while I like the guy, some of those numbers not necessarily all that good. KJ Noons, 11 and 6 on his pro career, making his UFC debut, had a losing record of 3 and 4 in Strike Force. He's currently riding a two decision loss streak, so it's back to back decision losses to Ryan Couture and Josh Thompson. He's lost four of his last five fights, and all four of those losses have come by way of decision. He has just two knockouts since 2008, despite being a professional kickboxer and professional boxer. He's a black belt in Kempo Karate, and he has been taken down 13 times in his last five fights. That's almost three takedowns per fight. I gotta go with Donald Cerrone here. I think Cerrone is the more complete mixed martial artist. So I'm gonna take Donald Cerrone to beat KJ Noons by knockout or technical knockout in the third round. Also in the lightweight division, we have Gray the Bully Maynard making his return to the UFC, taking on TJ Grant. And I think this is a great lightweight fight. I believe this is a title eliminator. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Gray Maynard, 11-1-1-1 and on his pro career, has a 9-1-1-1 and record in the UFC. He decisioned Clay Guida in his last fight, and 9 of his 11 pro wins have been decisions. He was finished, however, in his only career loss. He only has a 31% striking uh, type number. So when you consider that he's got a lot of ground grappling in there too, so a lot of ground and pound, it's only 31%, which is to me not very good. 48% on his takedowns on his career, but he spams takedowns, like you're playing someone in Undisputed 3. Lots of guard passing, he's got a bit of ground and pound, he's one of these guys that's got a John Fitch style, and he's gonna do just enough to keep the referee from standing them up, and that's just Gray Maynard's style. TJ Grant, 20 and 5 on his pro career, 7 and 3 in the UFC. Currently riding a 4 fight win streak. Uh, Matt Wyman, Evan Dunham, Carlo Prater, and Shane Roller are his victims on that streak. 13 of his 20 pro wins have been by submission. He is only 4 and 4 when the fight goes the distance, so a lot of worry there. He likes clinch striking, and he's going to need every ounce of that 37% takedown defense in this fight against Gray Maynard. I really wanted to take TJ Grant. I can't do it. I think Gray Maynard is going to fight his style, fight his fight, and he's going to win a dis uh, decision, unanimous decision, probably 30-27, maybe 29-28 on all the cards. I'll go with Gray Maynard to beat TJ Grant by decision. But that's okay, because the next fight is going to pick it up, because there's going to be probably... A highlight reel knockout in here somewhere. Glover Teixeira, light heavyweight division, taking on James Tehuna. This is going to be an exciting fight. Glover Teixeira, 20-2 and two on his pro career, also known as the Destroyer of Worlds. 3-0 and oh in the UFC, currently riding an 18-fight win streak, and that includes Rampage Jackson, Fabio Maldonado, and Kyle Kingsbury inside the UFC. 17 of his 20 pro wins have been finishes. He's got 12 knockouts and 5 submissions, so he does have some submission ability in there as well. 
power punching, vicious ground and pound, an 80% takedown accuracy, and 100% takedown defense in his last five fights. James Tehuna, 16 and 5 in his pro career, 5 and 1 in the UFC, currently riding a four fight win streak, including wins over Ryan Jimmo, Joey Beltran, Aaron Rosa, and Ricardo Romero in the UFC. Now, 10 of his 16 pro wins have been by way of knockout. He has been submitted in four of his five losses. He's an elusive guy, especially for a light heavyweight. He avoids about two-thirds of incoming strikes against him and has almost a 70% takedown defense. But as far as I'm concerned, Glover Teixeira is a destroyer of worlds. I have to see Glover lose before I can even think about the concept of him losing. So I'm going to take Glover Teixeira here to beat James Tehuna. But now, actually, the more that I think about it, I think I'll take it by decision. I want to give James Tehuna a lot of credit because he is a good fighter. So I'll, 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 go to a I'll take it to a decision, but I'll still take Glover Teixeira to beat James Tehuna. Co-main event of the evening, heavyweight division, hashtag rally for Mark Hunt, Junior Dos Santos taking on Mark Hunt in the heavyweight championship number one contenders match. Junior Dos Santos, 15-2 on his pro career, 9-1 in the UFC, was decisioned in his last fight by Cain Velasquez to lose the heavyweight title. That also snapped a 10-fight win streak for Dos Santos. 11 of his 15 pro wins have been knockouts, crisp and powerful boxing, and he's very good at keeping the fight on his feet. It's around a 75% takedown defense, but he only avoids less than 60% of incoming strikes, and I think that's important. Even if only four of every ten incoming strikes are hitting you, when you've got a guy like Mark Hunt, I know JDS has a very, very good chin, but <laughs> Mark Hunt has shown in his last few fights he's got a lot of power coming on those strikes. Mark Hunt, 9-7 and seven on his pro career, but 4-1 and one in the UFC. Currently riding a four-fight win streak. Stefan Struve. He walked off on Stefan Struve. Czech Congo, Ben Rothwell, and Chris Tuxer. He's been finished in all seven of his losses, six of those seven by submission. I don't think he really needs to worry about getting submitted in this fight. He avoids two-thirds of incoming strikes, so about 66-67%, which again is much better than avoiding less than 60% of incoming strikes. It makes a difference. The big thing about Mark Hunt is Mark Hunt adapts to the fight. He's even said it. He's like, the training part of MMA I hate, the fight part of MMA I love. And he's so good at adapting to a fight as it's happening. I've gone against Mark Hunt, I think, in back-to-back, -back, maybe even back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back fights. It may be three straight fights where I've gone against Mark Hunt. I can't do it. Hashtag rally for Mark Hunt. I'm going to take Mark Hunt to upset Junior Dos Santos by unanimous judge's decision to win that fight and take on the heavyweight champion in his next fight. But who's the heavyweight champion going to be? Main event of the evening, five rounds for the UFC heavyweight title, a rematch between current champion Cain Velasquez and Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Cain Velasquez is 11-1 on his pro career. He is 9-1 in the UFC. Of course, decisioning JDS Junior Dos Santos in his last fight to regain the heavyweight title. Nine of his 11 pro wins have come by way of knockout. The big thing about Cain is striking from everywhere, but he's got great ground and pound. So he, he will throw stand-up strikes, obviously. He will throw clinch strikes, but he's just got very good ground and pound. So if he gets you to the ground, he will TKO you. He loves to hit those power takedowns power doubles, uh, get you on the ground and pound you out, pass your guard, get into dominant positions, finish fights. Antonio Bigfoot Silva is 18 and 4 in his pro career. He is 2 and 1 in the UFC. Also quite possibly the biggest Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt in the world. Two straight knockout or TKO wins over Alistair Overeem, which was an upset in my eyes, as well as Travis Brown. 13 of his 18 professional wins have come by way of knockout, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but also a black belt in both Judo and Karate. He's going to have the size and strength advantage in this fight, but he needs to stay standing and he needs to use his range and what I believe is at least an inch or two on a reach advantage. He's really going to need that to keep Velasquez away from him, stay on his feet, and try to pick him apart. I don't think it's going to happen. I think this is going to go relatively similarly to the way their first fight went, but since this is actually a title fight, and since I think Antonio Silva has improved, improved since that fight, 
I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Velasquez, but I think I'm going to have to go with a unanimous judge's decision. I don't think Velasquez finishes him in this fight. I think this is actually a heavyweight fight that goes all five rounds, which might sound silly, uh, and it might get really, really bad in the latter rounds because you've got two big guys going into the fourth and fifth, the championship rounds. Might not be the best uh, visually for the fans, but... I'm going to take Cain Velasquez to retain the title, defeating Antonio Silva by unanimous judge's decision to set up Cain Velasquez versus, unbelievably, Mark Hunt for the heavyweight title. Those are my UFC 160 predictions. We're going to go over them here with you one more time. Facebook prelim card. Featherweight division, I have Jeremy Stevens TKOing or knocking out Estevan Payan in the second round. Bantamweight, I have Brian Bowles decisioning George Roop. Welterweight, I have Stephen Thompson knocking out or TKOing Nashawn Burrell in the second round. Lightweight division, I have Habib Nurmagomedov with a second round submission victory over Abel Triillo. Welterweight division, I have Colton Smith with a unanimous judges decision victory over Robert Whitaker. Featherweight division, I have Max Holloway upsetting Dennis Bermudez by first round knockout or TKO. And the final fight of the prelim card, welterweight division, I have Rick Story with a second round knockout or TKO victory over Mike Pyle. Main card, lightweight division, I have Donald Cerrone with a third round knockout or TKO victory over KJ Nunes. Also in the lightweight division, I have Gray Maynard with a relatively boring decision win over TJ Grant. Light heavyweight division, I have the Destroyer of Worlds, Glover Teixeira, with a unanimous judges' decision victory over James Tejuna. Heavyweight division, I have Mark Hunt upsetting Junior Dos Santos by unanimous judges' decision to become the number one contender for the heavyweight title. And main event, heavyweight championship of the world in the UFC, I have Cain Velasquez retaining the title by unanimous judges' decision over Antonio Silva. Those are the fight picks. I want to hear your fight picks in the comment section below. That's it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, and enjoy the fights on Saturday night.